Greetings North Andover, I'm your hometown host, Ron Carpenito, and welcome to this episode of the North Andover Journal. Our Senior Center decided to celebrate St. Patrick's Day a little differently this year, and with some luck of the Irish on their side, they all had a great time. The drive through event was a hit, complete with treats and goodie bags, as they honored their director, Irene O'Brien, who is retiring from her role after almost two decades of service to our seniors. because just like Irene, we were not going to be stopped in celebrating St. Patrick's Day and celebrating her wonderful years of service to everyone here in town. And just like Irene, everyone found a way to do it. So this is fantastic. It's been a wonderful ride. It's been, uh, I, I just remember when I came here and uh, Paul was the really only full-time person in the building. and. Uh, we had part-timers and, you know, the, the outreach with the 12-hour position, programs with the 12-hour position. And uh, we worked really hard and we went to, in front of a lot of town meetings and looking for, for the support. And we always we did receive the support and I'm so grateful for that. And um, I just could stand up here forever and say what I'm grateful for, but I'm just so grateful for every one of you for being here today. And this is just such an honor. And it, I just appreciate it. I didn't expect it. I just thank you. I know it's been such a hard year, but you all do so much to bring back some sense of normalcy to our community. And to provide this event for our seniors is such a treat. And especially for us who haven't really been outside or gone to any event, it is a special treat for us to be here. Hello, everybody. I miss you all so much. And you all look great with your St. Patty's Day year on. It's always a pleasure to see you down here. Uh, a little bit different this year, obviously. Uh, normally we get to get together and have our dancing activities and our uh, sing-alongs and the music and the socials inside with the food, but so grateful today to have such a dedicated group of volunteers and leaders that have put together this outdoor celebration to keep the festivities alive even during this trying time. So I just wanna say thank you to everybody who helped to set this up today to all the volunteers, to all of those who work at the Senior Center, and obviously uh, all done under the great leadership of Irene. Oh, Brian, everybody. Um, one of the things that has been so great about having Irene as a partner is that during this COVID crisis, everything had to change a lot, and it wasn't what everyone was used to, and it wasn't uh, the ideal world for our seniors, but she made sure that she did outreach to all of our seniors so they got what they needed, and then also, when it came time for vaccines, you have been at the forefront of fighting to make sure that seniors are not forgotten about, and I really appreciate that. That is something we cannot underscore enough here in North Andover. So thank you, Irene, for all that you've done. What a great time and effort put on by everyone at the Senior Center. And I know I speak for all of us here at North Andover Cam when I say, Thank you, Irene, for all the hard work you've done for our North Andover seniors. You will truly be missed. And please stay tuned right here for the announcements of the official reopening of our Senior Center. Next up, author and North Andover resident Dom Nager recently published his first book, The Lost Freighter, a sci-fi story featuring outer space battles, mysteries of family disappearances, asteroid belt criminals, and more. Gabrielle Griffiths recently sat down with Dom to get the inside scoop about his book and journey to becoming a published author. 
Hello, my name is Gabrielle Griffiths, and today I'm sitting down with Dominic Nagar, who is the author of The Lost Freighter. Uh, he is a North Andover resident who just recently published this book in 2019, and he is here today on The Journal to kind of talk about his journey of writing this book and becoming an author. Uh, thank you so much, Dominic, for joining me today. Sure, thanks for having me. So my first question for you is to kind of just start off summing off the book. Uh, tell me a little bit more about it, the plot line, characters, all that fun stuff. Sure. So The Launch Freighter is just as much a science fiction adventure as it is a coming of age story because it's set on the moon in the 24th century, so it's pretty out there in terms of sci-fi. But the main character is 16-year-old Jason Clark, who's on the nerdier side of things at his high school on the moon. And basically, he's been raised by his grandmother for most of his life, and he doesn't know a whole lot about his parents, who they are, where they are, whether or not they're even still alive. But at the beginning of the story, he finds out that there's an organization further out in space that has a grudge with his dad. Because when a stolen freighter appears in his hometown and kidnaps his grandmother, he's forced into a trek across the solar system to save her and to get to the bottom of his own past. Wow. Sounds very interesting. Thanks. Um, so what was it that inspired you to write this book? So I've been writing for about 10 years now, and I've always kind of drawn on some of my favorite stories for the action side of the inspiration, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Marvel movies, Star Wars, as you can imagine, the Harry Potter saga, mm -hmm. the Percy Jackson books. But as for the personal aspect of Jason's story, I really kind of drew on my own life and particularly on the rocky relationship I've had with my mom for most of my life. Because Jason, although him and I have lived in different circumstances, I drew upon some of the same feelings I felt to create his character, where he feels a lot of loneliness, some abandonment, a lot of confusion, especially mm -hmm. when he's trying to figure out his own past. Because I spent a lot of time growing up doing that, trying to figure out some of my own past. And it was really great for me to be able to create a character who I can make the hero of his own story and have him face down every challenge that comes to him because I, then I can call, uh, follow his example. And I'm glad to say that I have a good relationship with my mom now and this book was a big part in helping me to get there. That's great. They always do say, write what you know. So it sounds kind of like that's what you did, which is really um, interesting. And it kind of leads me to my next question on the process that you had during this journey um, when it came to writing, creating, editing, and all that stuff, and, and then going through and publishing it. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and kind of how long uh, the process took overall? Sure. So I wrote the book in about three or four months during my freshman year of high school. And from there, it was just a matter of editing, formatting, and uploading it through Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing Service. So I actually signed up for a Photoshop class during my freshman year so that I could make my own covers, which is exactly where I learned to do this. And from there, I really just had to format into Amazon's um, layout and put the cover in and upload it together. And it did I took my time with it because I was really consumed writing the two, seri the two sequels for this book. Excuse me. But I'm really glad that this first one's out now. Awesome. And that actually kind of leads me to my next question, which is, are you in the process of writing anything new? So it sounds like you have some sequels, but I'm kind of just curious to hear what your next step is from here. So I have some ideas for some new stories, but those are on hold right now because I really want to finish this project that I started with this book. Uh, I'm almost done editing and formatting the two sequels, and although it's tough with school and college decisions coming up, I'd really love to get the two sequels published before I graduate this spring. Um, from there, uh, I'll be writing new stories, but hopefully you can expect two more books from me by this summer. Awesome. All right. We'll definitely keep an eye out for that. We'll be sure to put any updates out on our channels and stuff when that comes out. Uh, but thank you so much, Dom, for joining me here today. I really appreciate you sharing um, your journey. And I just want to know if you have any final words that you kind of like to share with the North Andover community just about your process and journey of being an author and also um, how you can order your book if anybody is interested. So you can find the book right on Amazon. It's available as an ebook or paperback, and it's pretty cheap. And <laughs> as, as far as the community, I really just want to say thanks to the community that I've grown up in, because everyone I meet in this town and everything I do has been a huge inspiration to my story. And it really just, I draw ideas from everything that I see around me. And I've had, everyone has their critics, but I've had an amazing community of friends, family, and teachers backing me this whole time. And I'm really glad that this dream has become a reality now. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped me get there. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Dom. I'm Gabrielle Griffiths. Have a great rest of your day. Now, Dom's book is available on Amazon. And please remember, if you order anything on Amazon, shop through Amazon Smile. 
They take half a percent of eligible purchases and donate that to a nonprofit organization of your choice. And when you are selecting the nonprofit to benefit from your purchase, be sure to select North Andover Cam. Thank you so much, and we appreciate it. Now, our North Andover Cam staff had such a great time covering all the winter sports that took place this season, and we've put together some of our favorite highlights to share with you all. Kutz driving to the left, off the glass, no good. Nate Williams, there he is! Hey, King almost came up with a steal. Kelly to the basket, blocked by Isner, Nate Williams! There's the defense. Cuts the Walensky three-pointer, good! We're down to a one-point game. Here he goes, Harris King! Nice call, it is! It's gonna be, there it is! Here's Kutz drive to the basket, floater in the lane. There you go, nice soft touch. Connell. Another chance, there's another three. Pensavelli, there you go! Inside O'Connell, tie game, yes! Nice block. Block by Mahe. Let's get it. Nice pass, Katie Roby. The Garcia back to Jackie Rogers. Nice play inside. There you go. Pull up jump shot. Bucket. Catherine Fitzgibbons in the game sophomore. It's three. And a Martin. Swish. Katrina Garcia from the corner. Nice pass. Oh, going in. This is Hine. Hine with a shot in. And a goal. Coming in with a clean pass to the net. Shot. And a big save there by Williamson. Finally goes back to North Ann Arbor, then is taken away. Oh, that is a huge hit. Pass over. Ruby has it now. Ruby with a shot up. And a goal. Nice bit of forecheck there. Intercepted by De Blasi. De Blasi sidesteps the uh, defender. It's a two on one short handed. That shot goes in. Shot. Score! And here they come. Nice. Oh, boy. <laughs> the puck got through to the goaltender. The player did not. And North Andover still has it. That shot goes in. And a save. And it hops over. It's a goal. With it now. Shot goes in. And a goal. And it's taken down. It could be a clean pass to the net. Coming in there, taking the shot, and a goal! With it now, here we go again. That's a Zemiroski. She takes a shot, and a goal! Takes a shot in, and a pass save there. And a score! Going behind the net, trying to set somebody up in front. Oh, it goes out, and it's a goal! And it's just uh, kind of a, a bouncing puck right now. That shot goes in, and a goal! Oh, tries to pass it out. And right now, oh, taking away there. That's a Nasser. Nasser scores! And that shot goes in. And that one, oh, it's a, <laughs> Tanners wasn't sure she stopped it. Yes, Riley! And remember, Fall 2 sports are now happening, and Cam will be covering those upcoming events as well. Now, some of our Fall 2 sports coverage has been made much easier by the addition of the new press tower built by the North Andover Boy Scouts. The tower is positioned over the North Andover High School upper field area and provides us with a much better vantage point from which to record the action on the upper high school field and track. Here's a look at what went into the construction efforts. Hello, I'm Aiden Loth. I'm an Eagle Scout from Troop 87, um, and this is my Eagle project. It is a filming platform for the town of North Andover. Okay. So uh, this project is a filming platform, which is to be used by North Andover Cam to better film uh, sports games and community activities. So previously, North Andover Cam had to balance their equipment on the rickety bleachers, uh, but now they can balance it on top of this platform. 
uh, which would help them better film different events uh, from a better vantage point, from a little bit further forwards and at the 50 yard line. I've been a scout since I was in first grade, uh, so I've been in the, around for a long time. And uh, this was definitely one of the bigger uh, achievements, projects that I've done. So an Eagle Scout project is um, a group of people, generally one leader, um, uh, one person leads a bunch of other people in the construction of a project or in the uh, completion of a project um, that will benefit a community or a group of people in some way. So first, a scout's going to need to find a project. Generally, they need to speak to someone in their town uh, who has a project to do or something in the town that needs to really be completed uh, to benefit people. So after that, the scout needs to uh, basically go through a bunch of paperwork that outlines uh, what the project's going to be and how it's going to be completed. Uh, then they need to find volunteers to help them make the project. Then they actually have to execute said project um, and construct it and then make sure everything's working properly before getting certified. We had to get this passed by the uh, school committee first, and then we had to get it passed by the uh, facilities manager. Uh, then we had to get it passed by the principal to make sure no events were happening here. Um, then we had to get it passed by the building inspector to make sure we were actually authorized to uh, build it. Uh, and then we constructed it, and then the building inspector had to come out again to make sure it was actually up to code. So when we were first designing the platform, um, we just came up with some rough sketches because we wanted it to be um, not too tall, but we also wanted it to be tall enough that it was as tall as the bleachers at least um, and sturdy. And our initial design did not include a lot of the framing that you can see underneath it. Um, it only contained cross braces, but we later figured that um, putting framing in instead of cross braces was going to help it be more sturdy as well as block a little bit more uh, weather from getting under there. Uh, the rest of the design we uh, drew up on a digital software to um, make sure it you know, looked good and worked properly and then we built it. Overall I think it went pretty smoothly. Uh, we, despite the cold we actually got it done pretty quickly and uh, with very few hiccups. Uh, we did have to resize some stuff and we did have to drill different holes but other than that everything really went pretty smooth. Everybody stayed on task. Uh, we completed it relatively fast and uh, none of the materials had any big problems. We didn't have any huge shortages and there weren't any big logistical concerns either. So we're out here uh, on our, our new camera platform setting up for the new spring season for track. Um, this platform was built for us by an Eagle Scout. We were out here last fall doing lacrosse and um, it seemed like our cameras couldn't get up over the, uh, the, the team on the sideline and uh, it was hard to see all the action in the game. And if we were to put our camera uh, cameras up on the bleachers, it, it would definitely rock um, and, and affect the shot and the coverage of the sport. So we, we talked to the scouts, it seemed like a good fit, and um, they, they devised the project, and, and this is kind of the end result. So we're yeah. eager to get out here and, and film the track uh, for this spring season and, and figure out how, how well this works. It, it looks, looks like a great view from here where I'm standing, so I can't wait to see the footage that uh, you guys can all watch on either Cam Access or Cam Ed to see the full season of uh, track. A very heartfelt thank you from North Andover Cam to Aiden and Troop 87. And please be sure to tune into Cam Access, which is on Comcast 22 and Verizon 24 to catch our coverage of track and field for the spring season and other upcoming events. Now we are back with another episode of our series, Back to Business, produced in partnership with the North Andover Merchants Association. Now on today's episode, we are featuring Merrimack Valley Body Works, where they discuss their new ways of getting back to business while keeping everyone as safe and relaxed as possible. Hi, my name is Diego Pasqual. I am a massage therapist at Merrimack Valley Body Work. I've been a massage therapist for 11 years. I am Heather Berg Evans. I have also been a massage therapist. I have been one for almost 20 years. We did take those three months that we were home not massaging to really figure out what we needed to change, adapt, what we needed to add to our practice, what needed to change 
for the purposes of moving forward when we were able to open. So we made sure we took all the precautions we needed and purchased all the things we needed to purchase. We reopened uh, June 22nd, I believe. Um, and that first three months were, um, were tough, you know, just, just people not sure if they want to come back. So we did a lot of like hands-on texting clients to let them know we were back. The customer traffic had to change because we, they didn't want people overlapping. Um, so we knew we needed to change our schedules a little bit. Um, and in the end, they actually gave us a half hour in between clients. So we are even doing less clients in the same amount of time that we were before. Um, so that the clients don't overlap. We went ahead, we bought, uh, there's air purifiers with uh, HEPA filtration and UV light um, in every room of, of our studio. The expectations that I feel our clients should expect coming back to Merrimack Valley Body Work is exactly what the regulations were put in place. We followed it to a T, we printed everything out, we laminated, we <laughs> sanitized, we removed what needed to be removed. Um, we're down to like the bare minimum, which has felt really good, honestly. Um, we clean everything that anybody would ever come across. Um, I feel like we're wearing out the paint on our doors and our doorknobs. Um, we just make sure we make it an, at a point to um, have them walk in the door and feel that we've put the effort in um, because we have. You now, COVID has uh, certainly thrown a wrench uh, not only on just the everyday business stuff, but all the other add-ons, you know, that you don't even think about, you know, just the AC, the heating, all that stuff, and has really thrown uh, uh, a monkey wrench in through all of it. We have a whole new line of rescheduling now because people have that pressure of saying, I might have crossed paths with somebody and they don't know how many people to be removed from to be okay, to be safe. There's really no sense of like, I might have it or my sister might have it and I saw her four days ago and I don't know. So we have to be a lot more flexible with the cancellations and the same on their end because this has been the same issue with us. It's, it's, it's actually, uh, it's been kind of amazing with uh, the customer response to the changes that we have made. Um, everyone's been super understanding. Um, we're all, you know, working together to to keep COVID at bay and, and for us as a society to move forward. You know, in case we are forced to shut down again, um, you know, our plans is really to just focus on our community, do the best that we can to support everyone in, in whatever way that we can. Um, and, you know, and unfortunately just wait it out because there's not much we can do. We have all the things in place to, to get back and go right into it. Um, but, you know, letting our clients know that we are going to be here going forward, we're not going anywhere, um, and also... Some self-care is really, I think, what he's thinking. A lot of people reached out to us and they were like, my neck is killing me, I don't know what to do. And we were able to say, like, try heating it, try icing it, you know, have you done this, have you, you know, have, you know, let me show you how to have your partner, you know, do those motions or whatever it might be, just to help them in that little bit of, give them that relief they needed. Now here at The Journal, we are very happy to continue our collaboration with Merrimack College TV to showcase updates regarding campus life from students at our hometown college. Now today we're hearing from two students who share their journey this past year with resident living versus remote learning and how those experiences were different and affected each of them. Hey guys, I'm Chris and I'm a sophomore here at Merrimack College. A little about myself is that I'm a communications and media major, I am the chief video editor for Merrimack College Television, and I also have a couple of jobs on campus such as working for the O'Brien Center, the Athletics Department, and the school's Communication and Marketing Department. Come along with me as I give you the day in the life of a Merrimack College Warrior student.
Thank you for joining me today, and go Warriors! What's going on, Merrimack? My name is Christopher Zullo, and I'm here today to be the face of remote learning. No, I'm just kidding, but I am a remote learning student. I'm a freshman, uh, currently second semester, and it's going pretty good, I can't lie to you. It's a great gig where you can roll out of bed at 7.58 for an eight o'clock class and have perfect attendance. I mean, that's saying something. Merrimack does a really good job, in my opinion, of one of the biggest challenges when it comes to remote learning, which is bridging the gap. And I don't mean physically because, I mean, for me personally, I'm just miles away from campus, but for others, they're states away. So it isn't really as much physical as it is figuratively to make the student who's in New York, Chicago, across the country, to feel as if they're in Andover, as if they're a Merrimack student. And I think Merrimack excels at this with giving us all the technology and everything necessary for us to have the same quality of learning as another student would. I mean, the commutes from class to class are uh, pretty good. You know, it's not too, uh, too much walking. I would say my best advice for any remote student is to have your own workspace. Don't do your homework in your bed. That's not, that's not productive. Get your desk, get everything set up on it. Even if it's two feet away from your bed like mine is, have something you can walk to. Because at the end of the day, you need to have a destination to do your work. Being a remote student is great. You create your own experience. You have your own freedom. It's just how you use it is important. And with the software, Blackboard, everything's online anyway, it's really not that different than if I was to live on campus and do the same thing. All in all, it's a great experience, and trust me, I'd love to be on campus, but with everything going on, it's, you know, it just didn't seem worth it, in my opinion. But I'll be there soon. Christopher Zulo, signing off. Thank you, Chris. And as always, if you have a new story or idea for a segment, please email us at thejournal at northandovercam.org. Now, thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Journal, and be sure to keep an eye out for our future episodes. And from all of us here at The Journal and North Andover Cam, I'm your hometown host, Ron Carpenito, and thanks for watching.